A pleasant morning to all of us. And I'd like to thank you all for responding to our invitation to the webinar entitled Digital Based Game Learning for Science Teaching. Well, at this time of ECQ, wherein we have to think of alternative ways of reaching to our teachers so they do not stop learning, especially in the field of science education. By the way, my name is Cynthia Gaya, the project leader of the Project Science Teacher Academy for the Region Source Star. So this online training is brought to you by the Project Star um, of the Science Education Institute of the Department of Science and Technology. So I, I hope all of us get, uh, get a stable internet connection within the next 30 to 40 minutes so that we get to enjoy a clear and audible presentation or a session as a whole. So I'd like to welcome our, I'd like to call you Zoomers, kasi via Zoom tayo. So there are a total of, I think, around 40 participants in this uh, forum. And uh, I wish that you find this forum valuable to you as a professional and hope that learnings may be applied to your schools or workplace. Uh, I'd like to make special mention of the particip participation of our director, Dr. Josep Bio, the director of the Science Education Institute. Kawai kawai kayo, ma'am. Magandang umaga sa lahat and thank you for joining. Yes, ma'am. Thank you po. So, also, some of our star trainers from other regions. Uh, uh, I, I cannot mention all of them. Di ko alam ko sino talaga, but I saw Ma'am Levy there. Ma'am Aleli. Ma'am Levy from uh, Region 3, DepEd. And Ma'am Aleli from MMSU. So this morning, we have invited a resource person all the way from the Mindanao State University Institute, Iligan Institute of Technology, MSUIIT, to share with us the aforementioned topic. So he's an assistant professor of the College of Education and is currently completing his PhD in Science Ed at the University. He's also a star trainer from Region 10 and has been with us for the past five years already. So it's a great pleasure to introduce to you our speaker, Sir Jun Karen Caparoso. Sir Jun, take it away. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just want to check if the audio is clear at your end. Yes, yeah, clear. It's clear. Yeah, it's clear. So clear. Okay, thank you, Paul. Uh, good morning. Um, especially good morning to Dr. B, you know, who is also joining us this morning. Um, once again, thank you for joining Project Stars webinar series. Um, by the way, um, we will be giving you uh, to all the participants, we will be giving you uh, time later after the presentation to ask questions. So as much as possible, please mute your microphone while the presentation is ongoing. So we don't have any unnecessary interruptions. Thank you so much. So are we all uh, fine this morning? Uh, are we, I, I hope we are all okay. and. Thank you for joining this webinar series that is entitled Digital Game-Based Learning or DGBL in Science Teaching. And by the way, um, digital game-based learning is a long phrase. Uh, so sometimes it becomes a tongue twister. So in the duration of the presentation, I might be, or please allow me to use the acronym DGBL instead. Just like any teacher, um, I just, would like to share a topic that I am engaged in for a couple of years now. I developed so much interest about DGBL or digital yeah. game learning yeah. that I even want to explore and learn more about it in my dissertation. Currently, I'm writing my dissertation and it's on that topic. I hope that you also find the topic interesting and more importantly, relevant in your respective classroom contexts. Specifically, I will be discussing about 
what is digital game based learning what are the serious what are serious games and how they may be used in teaching science what is the state of dgbl in the literature and later on i'll be talking about the state or the status of digital game based learning in the philippines how do we implement DGBL in science? And how can we possibly adapt DGBL in a more flexible mode of learning? Allow me to begin with a quote from De Castell and Jensen in 2003, which says that without play, education becomes a force of compliance, not intelligence. And in this sense that we most urgently require, what we most urgently require of school today is that it can once again teach us to obey, not to obey. It is simply reminding us that we may be, it is also, maybe it's also necessary that we bring back the play or fun aspect of learning and not just settle uh, for the everyday convenience that we have the uh, everyday convenient, highly structured class routine, which through time becomes boring and interesting or even disengaging for students. Remember that we are currently dealing with a generation of gamers. So now I'd like to talk about digital game-based learning or DGBL, and I would like to present to you at least three definitions uh on the, the the concept i'd like to begin with that of friends in 2001 who uh who as far as i know was the first person or the first person to wrote to write a a book uh, on dgbl he says that digital game-based learning is a fusion of serious learning and entertainment Meanwhile, Erhel and Jamet describe it as a competitive activity in which students are given educational goals intended to promote knowledge acquisition. Also, Osman and Lay in 2018 describe DGBL as an approach that uses digital games such as serious games to foster learning. Before we elaborate on these definitions, I would also like to take the opportunity to, clar to clarify some issues or concerns, or if I may say confusions, regarding the concepts or terms that we will be using. Obviously, digital game-based learning must have originated or must have been derived from game-based learning or GBL. Um, which refers to the use of games to enhance learning experience. But because games that are used are digital or those games are requiring computing device or digital device, the word digital, digital is actually attached to game-based learning and that becomes now digital game-based learning. Not only that, the term gamification is also interchangeably used with game-based learning by some educators. Others may have mistaken game-based learning for gamification or the other way around. But are they really the same or are they really different? Uh, in a sense, they are similar because they both uh, promote uh, the idea of engaging learners in the classroom. They are both strategies that promote engagement and sustain motivation in learning, but they can also be distinguished. While game-based learning is the use of games to enhance learning, gamification refers to the use of game elements such as badges, leaderboards, experience points to a non-game context. In other words, Gamification 
in, if you are gamifying your class or for in gamification or in gamifying your class, you may not use a game. Instead, you, uh, you can just uh, adapt or use a game element to gamify your class. Whereas if you are really doing game-based learning, then you need to use a game in your class. So that's the 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 difference though that, that, that I can give now at least for now. And for this session, we will talk about digital game-based learning as an approach that uses digital games, particularly serious games to foster learning. Well, I mean, I would like to repeat now that for this session, we will talk about digital game-based learning as an approach to uses digital games, particularly serious games to foster learning. So what are serious games? Uh, before I, I answer the question, let me first ask you if you are familiar with these games that you've seen in your screen. Um, at your left is the Electric Octopus. It's a game on physics. It teaches um, Electromagnetism. In the middle, you have Bond Breaker 2.0, Chemistry at the Space Time Limit. This is a game in chemistry. And obviously, it's on, it's on bonding, particularly ionic bonding. And the third one is, of course, very familiar. That's Minecraft. It is popularly used in mathematics, I guess. I, do, I just don't know if some Filip uh, if Filipino teachers are using this. But in other countries or in other settings, they are using Minecraft to teach ratio and proportion in mathematics. In science, you may use this to tell stories about characters, locations, choices in buildings and designing things. So I'd like to ask this question, what do these games have in common? You might agree if I say they all provide entertainment because in the first place they are games. But other than that, these games, I mean, what is common to all these games is that they teach content. And common to all these games is that they can be used in teaching science content. So what really are serious games? Serious games actually is a subset of video games. But these are games that have a particular purpose. Particularly serious games aim to enable the player to learn a task, master a strategy, develop a certain skill, raise awareness about a topic, and provide experiential learning. Before we proceed, you might have also uh, heard sometime in the past the term edutainment. Actually, edutainment is a term that was used to refer to the earliest forms of video games, which are actually very poor in... Um, uh, entertainment value. So experts are actually criticizing those games as Shavian reversals. Those, I mean, in biology, we know that these are those that that failed to get the the good traits of parents. No, so basically, we are now giving away, or we, I mean, entertainment is no longer used nowadays because they say that. These games are just content dressed, redressed as games you know, because they have very poor, um, they don't meet actually 
the criteria of good video games. To make the long story short, this game is a more recent terminology referring to video games which successfully meet the criteria of a good game because it has the outstanding elements of good games for learning and at the same time, they promote the learning of content. So why are we using the term serious games? As I mentioned previously, these games advocate the learning of, I mean, these games have entertainment value. So they actually give fun and enjoyment, but as it, at the same time, they're educational. They provide instructional content and that makes these games serious. Solar system and the planets and the other members of the solar system. This one is immune attack. It's about the immune system. I also have here um, as an example, physics. Obviously this game is in physics. Uh, this one is stop disaster. Uh, this is developed by uh, UNISDR. International Strategy for Disaster Reduction. This is a very good game that uh, tackles uh, how to stop disaster. So you might give this to students for your DRRM class. So what is common about these games actually is that, um, as I mentioned earlier, these are all serious games. They have entertainment value at the same time. They have educational value. And that's, that makes them serious. Majority of these games are available online. Others are, I mean, are downloadable and maybe, play, maybe played offline. Download it in your computer or any other device and maybe played offline. But others are flash-based and needs to be played online. Uh, majority are, 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 are for free, while some are proprietary and hence you need to purchase. Question, uh, can serious games be used to teach content, particularly science? For now, the answer may be a yes or a no. But to help us come up with an informed and better answer to this question, I think we need to examine the body of knowledge about digital game-based learning and serious gaming. Let me begin with the River City Project. It's actually an eight-year study. Uh, this one is conducted by Harvard University. It was launched in 2004. And this project, this eight-year project, is actually uh, producing several papers. And they found that the multi-user virtual environment, or MUVE, is actually very motivating and improves content knowledge and inquiry skills as compared to paper-based instruction. They invited all middle-aged children in North America to participate in this project. And this, as you can see in the screen, I have, I have here the, the interface, you would see that it's like a usual video game but content is developed by the National Science Education Standard based on the National Science Education Standard of the United States, National Educational Technology Standards, and based on 21st century skills. Uh, the project is now expanded uh, originally intended for science, but the team is now collaborating with teachers in history and all other subjects uh, to actually let their students play the River City. To give you an idea, River City is a town uh, besieged with uh, all kinds of health problems. So students work together in small research team to help uh, the town or the residents understand why they are becoming ill. So as they accomplish that mission, students use technology to keep track of the different clues and hints of the causes of illnesses. They form hypotheses, they develop controlled experiments to test their hypotheses and make recommendations based on the data that they collect, all in that one online learning environment. Here 
if we dig deeper in the digital game-based learning literature, we will actually realize that the effect of serious games in learning, particularly in science, that of science content and acquisition of essential 21st century skills are well established. Um, these are just some of the many researches you know, that, or studies that I, I uh, have read where they found that serious games really enhance the learning of science content and improvement in learning gains is that, is, is that considerable. Um, likewise, they facilitate the acquisition of essential 21st century skills. Some of them, decision making, flexibility, critical thinking, creativity, self-regulation, collaboration skills and problem solving, and inventive thinking. A recent uh, meta-analysis on the use of serious games in education over a decade um, this was in, uh, uh, for the last 10 years, no, it was published last year, where Zongen uh, 2019 found serious gaming actually facilitates learners' holistic understanding of scientific conceptions as evidenced in improved performances in science and prolonged retention of science knowledge. So, this is what the literature say no? about the state of digital game-based learning or DGBL. Now, the supposed efficacy of serious games to facilitate the learning of the content and the acquisition of 21st century skills, as well as holistic understanding of scientific conceptions, does not result to either widespread integration in the science education curriculum of I mean widespread integration of serious games or digital game-based learning in the science education curriculum or increased in teachers' competence in implementing DGBL in teaching science for two reasons, according to Foster and Shine 2015. One is because of unsupported school conditions and the other one is because of the unclear pedagogical roles played by teachers in DGBL. In fact, the primary cause, I guess, is that teachers don't, are not even aware that serious games or that digital game-based learning through the use of serious games exist, or they don't even know that these games are actually, I mean, they don't even know that these games can be used to teach content, to teach science. So I, with much curiosity, I conducted a study um, sometime in 2018 no? to more or less paint a picture about the status of DGBL in the Philippines. I conducted a study on the engagement of both these science teachers and students in DGBL, uh, also uh, science teachers DGBL practices and conditions of schools in terms of DGBL infrastructure, policy, among others, in the public junior high schools in Region 10. And allow me to share some of the findings with you. First, our results showed that only less than percent of teachers, science teachers, claim to have used serious games in teaching science. So the it somehow confirmed the, the literature that um, there is no widespread integration of serious games in the science education curriculum. Another thing, I also found that majority of students are actually playing video games. Teachers use digital games may be categorized, now at, at this very moment, may be categorized, their level of use of digital games may be categorized as either beginning, integrative, and advanced. What do you mean by beginning? The use of games is only limited to game-like simulations like PET and other simulations. I say integrative, I classify it as integrative if the use is occasional, 
maybe once a month or once a year. And I say uh, another classification is advanced if that teacher is actually creating his or her own serious game for his or her student. Another uh, finding that I would like to share is that majority of the sample schools, because they say that, I mean, literature say that school conditions may not allow the use of DGBL in the classroom. But I found out that majority of sample schools actually have the facilities required for DGBL, like an ICT or computer laboratory, an internet connection that's available 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Only that in some schools, um, only teachers are given access, but it can be changed later on. No? And at least 50% of students in class actually own a mobile device. It's, it's either an iPhone, a, a, an Android phone, tablet, or laptop in their homes. And more than that, I also, uh, part of that study was asking science teachers what do they feel about uh, the use of serious in their classes, in their science classes. And they actually, they felt that serious games are actually applicable in their classes and they are willing, very much willing to, to try it in their classes, especially those who haven't tried it yet in their classes. Now let me ask you, is it possible to implement DGBL or digital game-based learning in science in the Philippines? Well, judging from the empirical data that I obtained from even just for one re from one region, I think we have to agree with me that it is possible. We may not, we may not have a, a written policy on how to use it at the moment, but we have the infrastructure and teachers are willing to use it and students are now using these games more than their teachers. If we are going to use it, if we are going to implement digital game-based learning, then how are we going to do it in science? Based on the existing DGBL models and frameworks and needs assessment survey, I would say that it is possible to implement DGBL through the use of serious games in two ways at the moment. First, we need to invest in developing virtual learning environments, just like the one, um, just like the one made, or uh, just like the one made by Harvard University. Because we can actually make serious games as learning environments themselves. So your motivation is there, discussion of science content or the, the, the science topic is there, assessment is there. It's all in one environment and that's, that's it. We already have a number of game development companies in the Philippines and developers you know, all over the country. Schools are off offering game development courses or game development programs. So we may also tap our local talents to help us in the execution of teacher-made designs or concepts, which I guess is possible because I've tried it myself, say, four, to five, four or five years ago. So if you're a teacher and you want to develop a game, you make your own design, your storyboard, and hire somebody to execute the plan, a game developed uh, for that purpose. Another thing is that we may actually integrate DGBL in the inquiry learning cycle. Because I suppose um, if we are teaching science, we believe that inquiry-based learning should primarily be the, the approach in teaching science. And Project STAR, Science Teacher Academy for the Regions, we're actually um, advocating the use of IBL or inquiry-based learning approach in science. That's why we have conducted training since 2015 all over the country. So how do we do this integration of DGBL in the inquiry-based learning cycle? If we do this, we can actually utilize readily available games or existing science games, which you may find at any place in the internet. Um, in using them, 
we just have to be very careful that they are not developed for our target users, for our students. So the context may be an issue. Hence, if you use these games, these available games or ready-made games, if I may say, we need to make sure that we are choosing the most appropriate game for a certain topic. Once we have chosen the topic for the game, the next thing that we need to ponder, of course, is how to effectively use it in our class. How do we manage a DGBL class, which is entirely different from the usual classroom that we have? And I think we need to address these concerns as soon as possible so our students will benefit from the learning affordances of serious games, most especially in science. Remember, serious games begin with a mission, a task, a problem, or mystery to solve, which adheres very much to the principle of inquiry-based learning or inquiry-based or inquiry -based science. Actually, I'm currently working to come up with a model of this possible integration, but for obvious reasons, of course, um, I cannot share it with you at this time. But as soon as the consensus will allow it, I am more than willing to share it with you. Maybe in some avenues or in some other avenues or platforms later. Next question, can DGBL be implemented in a more flexible mode of learning? Well, with our current situation, um, discussions are actually ongoing, uh, particularly on how to make our educational system more disruptive resilient, no? because Naturally, our country is prone to typhoons, natural disasters like typhoons, earthquakes, and just recently we have this pandemic. So policymakers are now looking at, I mean, alternative modes of instructional delivery. And I think in science, one possible approach that may be considered is the use of digital game-based learning. How to do it? Well, we may have, we may actually tap one of the of blended learning mode and that's that's flipped learning you assign students to play the game outside the classroom discuss the in-game topic in the classroom give assessment in the class and if you want you may also do discussion in a virtual classroom but you may also do it in class if you like and of course you just have in doing this you just have to make sure that students have access to to, to a device that is needed to play the game. So in closing, I would like to, to say that let us restore the fun in learning. And I, I think that ends the presentation. So for now, thank you very much. Thank you for staying with me. I am, I am now ready to answer your questions. Morning, hey, so. Sir June. Good morning. Morning, Paul. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I to go the first question. I'll feel free to speak up. Sir June, I have some questions. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Um, G, uh, the DGBL is basically is very interesting. The question is how we could assess the DGBL in classroom. Are we going to use a certain rubric or how, how is this to be done? Your concern is having I mean, assessment um, GBL as an approach and getting it right. Okay, just like any other approach.
Okay na. Okay. Pakimut na lang po ng microphone ng iba kasi nagbe-feedback po siya. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, I think when it comes to assessment, um, as a teacher, you may choose to to devise a scoring scheme. If you are actually implementing the game, as students are playing the game, you may devise a scoring scheme. And if you want other activities, you may make I mean worksheets based on the in-game topic. So, pwede pa rin siya, no? So, a kind of assessment that we are doing in the classroom at the moment are actually applicable if you are implementing DGBL in the classroom. So, I think um, it's just easy, no? So, I have here some questions. Um, sir, how about the platforms for the web-based digital applications? Available ba siya through iOS, Android? and Windows, sa group chat na lang. Um, yes, um, games are across platforms. Though may mga games na very specific lang siya for iOS devices, but there, I mean, but game developers at the moment are actually uh, creating or developing games uh, for, for different platforms. No? Okay. Is the DGBL platform available and easy to access by the teachers? DGBL po is not a platform. I mentioned that it's a strategy, it's an approach, it's an alternative approach in teaching science. So kapag ka feeling mo ang estudyante mo ay uh, nabuboard na sa traditional na, na pagtuturo mo ng science, might as well explore DGBL as an approach. Okay? So it's not a platform po. It's not a uh, it's not a platform, it's not a framework, it is an approach. Can we have access to the PowerPoint or have a list of the suggested games? Uh, yes, I can actually uh, include it in the site. I mean in in the slide, no in, in the last slide siguro. Uh, some links on the, the, the free games that you may use in your classes. But I am warning you, you just have to uh, to be um, uh, very evaluative in selecting a game. See to it that they are the most appropriate for your topic, for your students, because primarily these games are already made and they are not meant for your students. Is DGBL effective when done by groups? How do we manage DGBL when done in groups? What size of groups can you recommend if ever this is also manageable by groups? Actually, I am still studying what, I mean, how to manage a DGBL class. So, uh, so obviously, I cannot answer yet. No, I don't have a very good answer no, to that question at the moment. Part of my research actually is to, to come up with a model test it in the classroom, but I haven't done that yet, no? So maybe I can share with you what happened during the implementation, how, how, uh, how do we manage a DGBL class, no? I think that I, I'm still, no, also asking, no? So maybe later I can share the answer with you. In the foreseeable future, can we expect the web-based learning and teaching science be implemented even after the COVID-19 pandemic? I think, um, yes, now we can actually do it. Flipped classroom is not applicable in some places. Yes, I agree. Um, the original design is for higher education, no? for college students. Um, I haven't seen yet uh, somebody doing flipped learning in high school or in basic education. But I see some hope, I see some light because I all have seen studies, not in the Philippines, but abroad, using flipped learning in elementary for elementary students. So baka pwede siyang, ano, pwedeng eksperimentuhan natin paano ga gagawin yung flipped learning uh, in the basic ed. 
can we use this specially? Uh, will you be designing your own game for your dissertation? Uh, I'm not designing my own game. Um, my argument is uh, we will use the the existing games because sayang di ginagamit ng teacher. I just want um, teachers to know that these games exist. And if these games exist and they are available, especially those that are available for free, how can we do? I mean, how can we use it in the classroom? So I have tried developing a game uh, actually um, some years ago, but this time I'm not developing a game. I'm trying to come up with a model on how to use the existing games. What is the difference of DGBL to the use of web quest and treasure hunt? Web Quest is a web-based activity. Treasure hunt and web quest are web-based activities. They are not actually games. But if you want to integrate a game in your web quest, maybe you can do that. No? We have curriculum guide to comply and it's spirally constructed. How we could insert DGBL in class? Um, I'm not suggesting that you implement DGBL for every topic. Because that, I mean, one, one DGBL session would take you siguro mga two to three meetings. Obviously, it cannot be done in one session. So it is something that we need to, to look into later uh, when it comes to its integration in the curriculum. How do we implement or how often do we implement DGBL so we will not sacrifice um, uh, the, or jeopardize the completion of the curriculum that you need to really accomplish for that particular grade level. No? What are other sites aside from Diversity Project? Thanks. Um, Diversity Project is just one game, no? or it's a project. It's called Project because it's a research project by Harvard. But those games that I I showed to you as examples, Shocktopus, Electric Shocktopus, Bond Breaker 2.0. These are all available online. Just have to search for the name of those games and you can, uh, you can actually download them. Is there a standard used in evaluating games used in DigiBell, appropriate use in a specific subject? That is of the model that I'm currently developing. No? As I mentioned, I am helping teachers um, to use these games, to these available games. So, Isa po yan sa mga gusto kong uh, i-develop no? yung criteria or some points that teachers can use in evaluating the appropriateness of these, of these games in a particular topic. Okay, so this, we still have more questions coming in. Meron pa ba, Sir June? Meron pa ba dyan? Ah, yes, uh, meron pa yung isa dito. Mga three yes. questions na lang, sir. Three questions. Yes. Uh, DGBL is quite interesting, yet I'm worried with the unsupportive school condition in implementing DGBL. Are you totally discouraging students to use their phones while in the classroom? Um, in the conduct of that study that I shared to you, uh, I was also informed by teachers that Though they don't have a written policy on DGBL in their school, their division actually sometime in the past issued a ban on the use of cell phones or cellular phones in the classroom. But despite the ban, I had dialogue with teachers that they are actually using cell phones in their classes because they felt that um, uh, in the absence of devices of one is to one ratio of computer to student in their school, they can actually tap the power of uh, mobile devices like cell phones. They're using it in sharing images, sharing handouts. No? So actually it's not, at the moment, we just have to, uh, siguro, to sit down and, and uh, make a concrete plan uh, so that, kasi sayang if di nagamit yung ano eh, yung, yung cell phone. We, have, we just have to, to, siguro, I don't like to use the term sensor, but we just have to restrict no, um, on the kind of uses of devices. Basta it's for learning purposes, it's for uh, 
Yes. Another way back into 2019, my BSS students together with an IT student developed a game-based application as intervention in addressing several least master competitiveness of chemistry. Is there already a standard tool in evaluating DGB apps? My students used an evaluation tool for non-print materials by DepEd. Uh, this is from Sir Joey Nell Marzan. Uh, he's asking if there is a standard tool in evaluating the games. No? Actually, um, I also made a game last, I mean, some years ago, and uh, I did not use a rubric. I instead used heuristics in evaluating instructional materials like games. So maybe I can share that with you if you like. No? Just message me or in any way you can contact me. No? I can give that heuristics uh, and share that with you. Is, is, any yes. is, any yes. is any DGBL available on the App Store or Play Store, sir? Uh, yes. Uh, some of these games are available in the, in the App Store for iOS devices and for, uh, in Google Play for Android devices. Yes. Okay. So... There are more questions coming in, but we will try to answer all those questions sa star, star FB page namin. Because we have only four and a half minutes remaining sa Zoom time natin. So, we would like to thank you, uh, Sir June Karen Caparoso, for this opportunity. Thank you for uh, being our first speaker in this webinar. So please expect uh, participants that we will be coming up with uh, more, more uh, seminars uh, of this kind in the future. So since this one is on science, maybe the next one would be in math. We expect that uh, you'll still be joining us and please do check once in a while our FP page, Science Teacher Academy for the Regions. You have to like the page para makagain kayo ng access. And if you will see there, there's also an announcement for the search for the Brightest Star 2020. If you happen to be a recipient of our training sa STAR, uh, you can be nominated or you can even nominate yourself to this, uh, this search. Okay, so we have less than a minute. So thank you very much, Sir June. Thank you very much, participants, and uh, we'll be seeing you more. Thank you, Paul. Bye-bye.